Hello Unity fans! In the previous few videos we've spent a lot of time on units, namely woodcutters and stonemasons. We've created complete action and animation cycles for these, but also adjusted our unit script such that it can easily handle many more unit types. Keep an eye on the top right corner for links to some of these videos if you haven't seen them yet. We have been graphically placing cabins on the map and did some work on their rotation and keeping the units from walking through them. However, there is still a lot to be done to ensure the placement of buildings don't violate rules like not being placed on top of resources or overlapping with one another. We also need to make sure they integrate seamlessly into the environment without things like hanging over edges or poles not reaching all the way to the ground occurring. This requires us to make real-time adjustments to our terrain Let's see how we manage all of this. First off, an easy way to standardize our building placement is to get rid of some of the local randomness in the terrain around the building site. Currently, we have different elevation levels implemented but we also have smaller variations within each elevation level, causing some X's to be slightly lower or higher. This variation is driven by a noise texture. The sensitivity to this noise texture can be set on a map-wide level, allowing us to pick a sensitivity that gives us the required map-wide variations. If we remove the variations completely, all hexes on a specific elevation level would be exactly the same height so buildings could easily be placed without visual glitches like hanging over slight edges. However, this completely negates the randomness that we want in the rest of the map. The solution is to also have a local sensitivity per hex that can be manipulated in-game to suit our needs. We add a scale multiplier to the hex cell script and set its default value equal to 1. This means 100% of the variability in height will be applied. While we're at it, we also add an absolute offset to add to the hex should we need something like this later on. This gives us complete control over average height and percentage height variability per hex for hexes with special purposes, like those that buildings will be placed on. All we need to do to implement these adjustments is to add them to the refresh position method. Where the noise is multiplied by the map wide perturb strength, we also multiply by the hex's individual perturb strength and add the absolute offset as well. To test this, we assign some random values to the scale and absolute adjustment variables of the hex under the mouse cursor when we press F. And we can see how this allows us to randomly change the height of individual hexes, while the rest of the map remains unchanged. After each adjustment, we have to refresh the grid chunk that the hex is on. And if it's on the edge of a chunk, we actually have to refresh the neighboring chunk as well, to ensure the connections with the neighboring hexes are also adjusted. Otherwise, things like this would happen. This refresh is somewhat resource intensive, so we shouldn't be doing this each frame, but in a game it would occur fairly infrequently. If we now set both the variability scale and offset values equal to zero, we are able to create flat parts of land by standardizing a group of neighboring hexes. This gives us a decently sized plot of land to place our buildings on. Now, in a game, we probably don't want the player to have to manually flatten out a piece of land hex by hex. We need our building placement mechanic to handle that automatically. This means that we're going to have to come up with a methodology to determine whether a certain building can be placed on a certain hex, given a whole bunch of factors to keep in mind. In this video, we will consider the rotation of the building, the size of the flat land required, not building over or too close to resources, and actually being able to find resources on the map from the intended location. We will expand our existing scripts to gather the information we need from the map and give us some visual feedback on why certain locations are not suitable for placing a building. First off, we want to make sure there is enough walking space around the cabin so that units won't get stuck easily. So for now, we do not allow any resources within one hex of the intended position. If we try to place a building down too close to a resource, we will highlight that hex for half a second. As a debugging feature, we also let a message to that effect appear on the screen. This can be made more appealing later. We do this by checking the intended hex itself 
and then looping through its neighbors and raising a flag if a resource is present. We display a temporary message, start a coroutine to flash a red outline over the offending hex and set allowed to false. Next, we need to check the elevation of the hexes around the cabin. Since the cabin is placed towards the back of the hex, with the unit walking out to its front, we need the hexes to the back of the cabin to be on the same level as the hex that the building will be based on. In a previous video, we've already rotated the cabin such that it faces the nearest resource, but this was done after the unit was already instantiated. We now want to be able to test the location before creating a unit. This means we need to move our find resource step to earlier in the process. Our pathfinding methods are currently part of the unit script and are dependent on the unit's characteristics, like its movement points. We have to create versions that do not depend on a unit's characteristics, and we do this by allowing us to pass null as the unit, and then just using a default characteristic value instead of the real value in such cases. So we determine our cabin's rotation like before, and then test the surrounding hexes as follows. The base hex, as well as the two hexes behind it, and those to its left and right, all need to be on the same level. And we will flatten them out later to make sure the building has level ground all around it. However, the unit will exit out onto the other two hexes, and units can walk up and down one elevation level. Also, those hexes are not close to the building, so they don't need to be entirely flat. So we only need to ensure that those two hexes are at most one elevation up or down from the base hex. When we know in which direction the unit will walk out of the cabin, we can deduce the maximum allowed elevation difference for all the neighbors and raise a flag with a message on the screen if there's an issue. Finally, if no path to a resource was actually found, it means a gatherer in that spot would be useless. This will happen if the map has not yet been explored enough. You don't want to allow a cabin to be built there. So we can again show a message and highlight the cell temporarily. And that's all we'll be testing for in this video. We still have to make sure the cell does not already contain a cabin on it or on one of its neighbors. But we don't actually have the infrastructure in place to save building details with the hex information yet. So trying to fit that in now is going to make this video way too long. No doubt a few more constraints will show up over time, so we'll eventually get back to this. To end off this video, we now flatten the land as required and place the building. If the intended position passes all the tests, we go ahead and, as before, determine the hexes that should be flattened each time setting the hex specific variation values equal to zero. The rest of the steps to actually create the unit and cabin proceed as before. You will notice that it has become a lot more difficult to find suitable locations for our cabins. We could adjust our automatic map builder a little bit by increasing the erosion factor to lead to larger flat surfaces. Alternatively, for maps that are manually adjusted, we could just make sure enough building sites exist. Another approach could be to allow one elevation level difference when we actually require the same level, and then force it level by changing the elevation level in-game as well, just like we're removing the variation at the moment. You could also make these terrain adjustments a mechanic of the game, say have builders or diggers flatten out the terrain first before a cabin can be built there. The changes could then be applied gradually, with the levels converging slowly, rather than in one discrete jump. But we'll keep what we have for now, and possibly revisit it when we have a better idea of all the types of buildings we will eventually need to cater for. I hope you found this episode enjoyable and or informative. Please consider subscribing and stay notified if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye!